Example 11 is another example using the empirical relationships to determine the undrained shear strengths. Or for this example, it's actually the unconfined com uh, compression strength of uh, cohesive soil. For this example, you're given a soil profile as shown in this figure here. So there are two types of soils. You have a dry sand layer with a unit weight of 15.5 kilonewton per meter cube. And you, are also, uh, you also have this clay layer that you know the moisture content, the uh, specific gravity GS. And you're asked to estimate the unconfined uh, compression strengths of the clay at this particular location. So we're going to call this location A, that is at a depth of 10 meters. And we're going to use uh, Scampton's relationship from 12.46, so that's shown here, and also 12.61 and 62. Okay. And for this clay, we also know the uh, liquid limit and plastic limit from which we can calculate its uh, plastic index PI. So it's liquid limit minus plastic limit. So that's 60 minus 25 is 35. So we know the plastic index that we need to use in these equations is uh, 35. And then uh, to use Scampton's relationship, we need to know the effective stress, this overburden effective stress at this point A here. To calculate the effective uh, overburden pressure sigma naught prime at point A, we need to know the unit weight of the sandy soil, which is provided to you, and also the unit weight of clay. So for clay, we are given moisture content in specific gravity. We can use the phase diagram, use the weight volume relationship to figure out the unit weight of clay. And to do that, I have a phase diagram here because you only have two phases for saturated clay. So we have water and solid phase here. And I'm going to assume the volume of the solid is one. And then the weight of the solid is simply the volume of the solid one times the unit weight of the solid, which is specific gravity times unit weight of water. And then we also know the water content. So the weight of water is simply water content times the weight of the solid, which is GS times gamma water. And then the volume of the uh, void, which is also volume of the water for saturated soil, is simply weight of the water over the unit weight of water. So it's omega GS. So that's how you get the void ratio. So this is omega GS. And if you plug in uh, these values, omega is 0.3, 30% water content, times 2.68. So the void ratio here is 0.804. And then to get the unit weight, the saturated unit weight of the clay layer, it's basically total weight over total volume. So if you use the phase diagram here, the total weight is 1 plus omega times gs gamma water divided by total volume is simply 1 plus b. Okay. And if you substitute uh, the unit weight of water gs void ratio and water content, you'll get a saturated unit weight of 18.95 kilonewton per meter cube. And the unit weight of water, uh, that's a constant, 9.81 kilonewton per meter cube. So at point A, uh, the effective overburden pressure uh, is basically three times the unit weight, of, unit weight of sand. So that's that three meter of dry sand layer plus 10 minus three. So that's seven meter of clay layer. And the effective stress, for effective stress calculation, we use the buoyant unit weight. So that's why we have this gamma saturated clay minus unit weight of water. So that's basically the buoyant unit weight. And if you plug in numbers, so three times uh, gamma sand is 15.5, that's given to you, plus seven times the buoyant unit weight of clay 
18.95 minus 9.81. So you get the effective overburden pressure at A of 110.45 kilonewton per meter cube or meter square. So now we have this uh, effective overburden pressure. We can plug in this equation 12.46. And PI, we already calculated is 35. So just plug in the equation. So this is 35. And this is 110. If you plug in these numbers, CU BST from equation 12.46 is 26.45. And once we have the CUVST, then plug in 12.61 for the correction factor. And if you plug in numbers here again, this correction factor lambda is 1.7 minus 0.54 times this is natural log of plastic index, which is 35 then times Cu from equation 12.46, which is 26.45. So our Cu value is 22.91 kilonewton per meter square. And finally, the unconfined compression strength Qu is simply 2 times Cu. And this is 45.83 kilonewton per meter squared.